Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a game of washer toss. Well, this is a great little project to use up scrap plywood. And in the day and age like we are right now, where plywood is more expensive than diamonds, you don't want to waste it. So this is a fantastic way to use up short little offcuts. So it's also a fantastic game to be able to get your children involved and have a little bit of fun outside. And here in the late fall, early winter months, it's a great time to make it and get it prepared for the spring. So enough talking about this. Let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what we start with. Well, what I have here is a bunch of scrap pieces of plywood that I have cut to be 11 inches long and they're three and a half inches wide. And these pieces are three quarter inch thick. These are going to form the walls of our washer toss game. So let me just show you how they're going to go together. Basically, each corner is going to overlap one length. So this one here, will butt up against this piece. This one here will butt up against this piece. And this last one will butt up against this one just like this. Now by doing this, we will end up with a nicely square box. And what we can do is all eight pieces here, we are going to glue them together like this, glue them and use some brad nails and clamp them together and let them set up. You just want to make sure as you go that you're making each box square. So at this point, you should have two boxes that are exactly the same size. Uh, the only difference is there's no bottoms here yet. And that's what we have this for. And that's just some half inch scrap plywood. I've cut it to 12 inches by 12 inches. It's a little large, I know, but we're going to use a flush trimming bit to trim that up afterwards. So what I'm going to do is apply glue to all the edges here, lay this piece in place, shoot some brad nails in place to hold it securely until it dries, and then we can trim it up with a flush cut router bit. And at this point, we can give the whole thing a good sanding. Um, I'm probably going to fill in these nail holes too with, while I'm at it with a little bit of uh, wood filler um, because this project is going to be painted. <gasps> yeah, I know, I said painted. Anyway, let's get the nail holes filled and give both boxes a good sanding all over. Well, while we're waiting for the wood filler to dry, there's something that we can do. I have this little cheap indoor outdoor floor mat here. I got it from a local dollar store for a few bucks. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the interior of the box and I want to cut squares of this, one each for each box that will fit tightly in the bottom of each one of our boxes. Okay, so at this point now, I have some four inch PVC conduit. And we're just going to put it in the center of our box. And we are going to trace around the perimeter all the way here, both inside and out. And this will give us uh, the position of our pipe. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these pipes and paint them white. You want to cut them so that they're no taller than the inside of the box. So in my case, three and a half inches, um, I'm going to cut them to be just below that at three and seven sixteenths. That way, when the pipe is glued in place, it will be below the edge of the box. Either way, I'm going to get both pipes marked here on both halves of the box. Truth be told, I really should have marked the center before I glued the top on. It would have made it quite a bit easier, but no harm, no foul. We'll, we'll get it done one way or the other. 
We're also going to mark the center of our piece of carpet here, and we as well will trace around our pipe and cut the hole out in the middle. Okay, and that's one of the carpets cut, and you can see that our pipe fits right in there. Now the circle that you cut out, just trim it up a little bit and you can use it to carpet the inside afterwards. Now we need to do the second one of this, but what we're going to do at this point is we're going to paint these pipes white. Once we get them done, I'm going to mix up some five minute epoxy and I'm going to place it around this line that we've drawn and I'm going to sink this pipe right in the middle of it there and we're going to let that set up. Once that's done, just for a little extra strength and a little extra, you know, sealing and that sort of thing, I'm going to put a small bead of clear silicone all the way around it and just smooth it out to help it adhere a little better to the box. While we are waiting for the epoxy to dry up, um, we'll work on the washers. And what I have here is a couple of washers from the big box store. They're one and three quarters of an inch in diameter. They have a five eighths inch diameter hole in the middle and they are one eighth of an inch thick. They are a hefty washer, but each team when you're in play gets three of these. So I ended up buying five for each team just to have a couple of spares, but you need to identify which washer is for which team. And a lot of people paint them. I don't like to paint them because after a couple games, the paint chips off. So what I have are these little lettered punches. And what I'm going to do on both sides of these um, washers is I'm going to punch the letter A on five of them on both sides of the washer. And then probably the letter X or something on the other one just to identify which washer belongs to which team. So I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. I've always had good luck with these punches. And that worked very well. I'll show you the close up there of that. There you go. So I'm going to continue and mark both sets of these washers, uh, being sure that I don't mix them up. And uh, then we can carry on with this build. Okay, and at this point, you should have something that looks just like this. Uh, we can put these boxes aside for now. We just have one more piece here, or two more pieces that we need to make. And what I have is some scrap half-inch plywood. It's six inches wide, and we're just going to mark it at two and three-eighths up from one end. Like that. We're also going to place a mark one inch in on both sides and as well one inch in from the bottom so that we have it one inch down from the top. Just continue that over and then we need a line one inch from this side. Okay, so what we need to do now is round off those corners. So I'm not going to get fancy. I'm not going to get technical. I'm just going to use one of the washers from the game and we are going to round it off just like this. And there you go. That's what we have at this point. These are the handles. You will need to make two of these. So I'm gonna take these over to the scroll saw, I'll mark out a second one, and I'll cut these handles out. And there we have our two handles for this project. So what you need to do now is take your box, we're going to clamp it together just like this, and these two handles will get mounted side by side here, one on each piece of the game board, like that. There will be one on this side, one on that. And when they come together in the middle, they will form 
the one inch thick handle. So I am going to put a round over, probably a one eighth round over, on the outside of each one of these pieces after I sand it. We are going to mark this and then carefully drill and we will glue and screw these in place. Okay, and with both these handles mounted, we can now give the whole thing a couple coats of paint. Paint it whatever color you like. Uh, you, on the inside, unless you want to, you only re really need to paint the inside walls. You don't really have to paint the bottom because the carpeting will cover it up to you, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to give this the paint that I want and then uh, I will see you guys when I get this done and we'll move on to the final step. Well, I've given the whole thing a couple coats of paint, just some leftover paint I had in the house. So what we want to do now is place the two halves together and we're going to use some inexpensive case latches, just like this. And on each side, one on each side, they will get mounted here so that we have a way to secure these cases together. Okay, and the very last step to do here is you want to take your pieces of carpet and we're just going to lay them inside. Now it's up to you if you want to use adhesive to hold these in. You can if you like. Uh, maybe some double-sided carpet tape or something like that. I think I would prefer to leave mine just friction fit in there simply because if you're playing it outdoors you're bound to get uh, grass or sand or whatever inside the case and it would be nice to be able to remove the carpet to be able to clean it out. So there you go. This is our game. Um, so the big question here is, how do you play? Well, to play this game, it couldn't be simpler. Um, there are varying rules online if you want to look them up. But the simplest way to play here is, for starters, you want to place the boxes approximately 10 paces apart. Now, depending on the age of your participants, you may want to lengthen that or shorten it if you have younger people playing. So either way, you'll set them both at 10 paces apart. You divide your players up into teams. It's usually a team of two people, but you can play one-on-one, -on -one, you can play three-on-three, -three, you can play whatever division you want. But the members of the team stand on opposite ends. So if you have two members to a team, one player from each team stands on each side of the boards or the boxes. Now, each team gets three washers. And the object here is to throw the washers over into the other box, preferably into that four inch pipe. If you get it in the box, you get one point. If you get it in the cup, you get three points. Now, once one team has tossed one washer, the next team then can toss theirs and they alternate until both teams have tossed three washers. The points cancel each other out. So if one team gets one point for a washer in the box, but the other team gets a washer in the box for one point, neither team gets anything. The object here is to get to 21. The first team to get to 21, once all the washers are thrown, wins the game. Um, now it just alternates from sides, so one side throws first and then the other side throws next, back and forth, and it goes on like that. It's very similar to horseshoes. I'm sure you guys, some of you out there have played horseshoes before. Now there is an alternate rule here. I don't know, some people play with this rule and some don't. If you are able to toss a washer and have it land and stay on the edges of the box, not the handle that we installed, but the edges of the box, it's an automatic win. That is an automatic win if the other team cannot knock that washer off. So if after all three throws, that washer still sits on the edge of the box, that team wins automatically. So if you want to play with that rule, that's up to you. And of course, you can alter the points as well. 
depending on the age of your participants, if a game up to 21 is going for too long, lower it down to maybe 10. Uh, either way, it's a fun game, guys. It's a great way to get involved with your family. you got to give this a try. And there you have it. A game of washer toss. Guys, this game is a load of fun for your family outings, your camping trips, your day at the beach, whatever you want to do or wherever you are going with your family. This is a great game to take along. Anybody can play it, any age group. The rules are simple. Um, and you know what? It's just a great way to spend time with family and friends. No matter how you look at it, games have always been and still are a great way to get together and have fun. It doesn't always have to be sitting around talking about the latest gossip or whatever. Get out there and play a game. Make one of these. Even with the latches and the washers, which I had to purchase, everything else I already had. I had the scrap plywood. I had scrap pieces of pipe around the shop. I had the paint. Uh, oh, I had to buy the carpet. But all in all, total expenses was still less than 20 bucks. So for $20 to get yourself a ton of family time and a load of fun, really, how can you go wrong? Um, if you're someone who enjoys camping on the weekend or going up to the trailer or that sort of thing, take this thing up there and leave it. I mean, I'm sure you will have people come over from other campsites and other trailers and want to play this game. If they don't, come over, invite them over. What a great way to meet new people. Either way, guys, it's a fun project. It's an easy project. And, uh, you know, the fun that you get out of it for years down the road, well, it's priceless. Oh, no! Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. This one's been, as always, a load of fun. Uh, now, I don't want you to think that this game is going to look pristine forever. In fact, it's probably going to look pretty dinged up after your first game. After all, you are throwing steel washers at it. So chances are uh, some of the paint's going to chip off and that sort of thing. So if it looks used and worn, well, that just means that you had fun. And the more worn it looks, the more fun you had. Um, if you want to paint those washers, guys, do it. Do it. Turn this project into your own. Modify it. Modify the size of the box, the size of the pipe. Modify what you do to the washers. Modify the whole darn thing, but just make it and make it your own. If you haven't already, guys, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss notifications of future episodes of the show. I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope you've enjoyed today's content. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.